The Holocaust was the mass murder of 6 million Jews. The Holocaust refers to the period from January 30th, 1933, when Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany, to May the 8th, 1945, when the war in Europe officially ended. 6 million Jews were killed, 1.5 million of these were children. Hitler was born on April 20th, 1889, in a small town of Bergenhof in Austria. Hitler believed that the people of Germany were destined to rule the world. He felt that democracy and workers' rights would disrupt the society. He did not believe Jews could control Germany. Others were targeted, such as gypsies, disabled, Afro-Germans, homosexuals and those who opposed the Nazi measure. Jews were also, you know, dragged out of their homes and forced to live in what the Nazis called ghettos, uh, uh, barricaded off parts of towns where Jews were uh, shoved in, in, in conditions of tremendous overcrowding. The place where I was, Theresienstadt in uh, north of Prague, had uh, seven or eight times the number of Jews in it that the town was built for as normal inhabitants which creates pretty horrific conditions. Um, and uh, of course, the water supply, when things broke down, they weren't repaired. And the same with the sewage system. So uh, there wasn't enough water anyway, because the population was seven or eight times as high as what the water supply was designed for. And uh, the same with the uh, drainage and sewerage system. And then when it broke down, things weren't repaired. So uh, th there wasn't an opportunity to wash properly. Many of the prisoners died in the concentration camps through deliberate maltreatment, disease, starvation and overwork, or were executed as, as unfit for labour. Prisoners were transported in humane, inhumane conditions in which many died before reaching their destination. The prisoners were confined to, confined to the boxcars for days or even weeks with little or no food or water. Many died of dehydration in the intense heat of summer or froze to death in winter. In Theresienstadt there was an outbreak of a disease called typhus, uh, which you can only get if there are lice about because it is spread by lice. You can stop the entire outbreak without treating a single human being by simply killing the lice with insecticide. Um, so there definitely were lice. So we were absolutely filthy. And uh, people died in large numbers, not from shooting or gassing, although those things happened as well, but a vast number of people died purely through a combination of malnutrition. You know, they weren't getting enough food, so they were uh, emaciated, and their body defenses were down. <coughs> And uh, they were in these filthy, overcrowded conditions, so infections spread all the time. And uh, the combination of malnutrition and uh, bad sanitation killed people. Now, uh, in Amsterdam, uh, before I was arrested, I had been living with a couple, uh, husband and wife, in their little flat, Round the corner and three blocks from the Anne Frank house, if you've heard about Anne Frank. Uh, you know, five minutes walk. And uh, uh, the, on the day I was arrested, they were arrested too. The woman was released the next day. The man was sent to ultimately to a concentration camp in Germany, 20 kilometers southeast of the German port city of Hamburg is a little village, it's on a bend in the river, uh, weeping willows, little cottages, it's beautiful. A few hundred yards from the end, edge of that village is the edge of what remains of a huge concentration camp. On arrival, men were told to strip, stand to attention for hours on end, you know, they were counted. They had, had to throw all their clothes on one big pile, all their shoes on another big pile, and then at a run, they had to collect clothes from one and shoes from the other, so they wouldn't have their own, they wouldn't fit. Big sign painted on the back so it could be shot if they got out of line, recognised as prisoners. 
and then they were shoved into holes in the ground to dig clay in all weathers, winter and summer, uh, in totally unsuitable clothing. At night they slept in, in brick buildings, but three tier bunk beds, three to six men to a bed. Um, again, almost no possibility uh, to keep clean, uh, no washing facilities, the food was filthy. Uh, the food was such that in the course of time a man would starve to death, particularly doing heavy labour. Uh, part of the inadequate amount of wood they got was made of, uh, of bread they got was made of wood, sawdust. They used sawdust in, instead of part of the flour to make the inadequate amount of bread that they got. It was horrific. And they were sleeping in three tier bunk beds, three to six men per bed, on bedding that was absolutely disgusting. I mean, a, a thin straw mattress and filthy, inadequate blankets in uneated sheds. Um, uh, three to six men to a bed, three to a bunk beds, <coughs> filthy conditions, vomiting and diarrhea all the time. Do I need to say what? Well, half the men died, you know, and his wife got just his spectacles back. So that's a little bit about hygiene. You know, vast numbers of people died, really, because of malnutrition and bad sanitation leading to terrible, fatal illnesses, which they had no power to resist. So that's a little bit about sanitation. It was one part of the killing methods to put people, human beings, in conditions where the sanitation was terrible. It's needless to say that when put in these conditions, people try to escape. However, some were more lucky than others. number of escapes from the Nazi concentration camp system was remarkably small. It's not that they didn't occur. One of the first successful escapers was Hans Beimler, who escaped from Dachau earlier in May 1933. He was a communist member of the Reichstag and fled to the Soviet Union. He wrote the first published description of conditions in a Nazi concentration camp. It first appeared in Germany in August 1933. On October 14, 1943, at Sobibor, 300 to 600 people escaped. They quickly learned that for every one person that was escaped, the guards would shoot 10. So if they wanted to escape, they all had to. By the end of the day, 11 guards were dead. On the 4th of October 1944, Weiss and her mother were, were transported to Auschwitz, where they faced Mengel, who was directing children and older women to work towards the gas chambers and fit adults towards the forced labour camp. She lied about her age, and thanks to that, she was one of the only 150 to 1,500 children believed to have survived of the 15,000 sent to Terezin. She was then transferred from Auschwitz to a labour camp at Flossenburg where she escaped death a second time when she was forced to join a 16-day death march to the camp at Mount Hausen. Uh, I mean, there's a lady who lives in Leicester called Sarah Elkis, whose father was uh, the Jewish leader of one of the Nazi ghettos in a place called Kovner in the Baltic states. Um, and uh, uh, her father arranged for a baby to be uh, smuggled out of the ghetto uh, in a, a jute bag. Um, uh, it, 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 they claimed it was a bag of potatoes. And I met this lady, she's dead now, but I, I, I met her once and I said, Ah, you're the, le you're the sack of potatoes! Uh, but she was smuggled out of the ghetto uh, and uh, a Polish uh, farming family took care of her and she survived the war. So there was the odd escape, uh, but it was uh, very unusual. Uh, there's one famous story which I've mentioned to uh, uh, Stacey Jackson, uh, a, a guy called Rudolf Verba, uh, who was a prisoner in Auschwitz. And uh, uh, in, in Auschwitz, 10% of the people arriving on average were selected for, for, for work. 
which meant you had a, uh, an average survival of three months before you died from starvation or beatings or uh, shooting or maltreatment. Uh, and uh, uh, groups of prisoners were taken out of the uh, Auschwitz camp to work in the surrounding area, in work gangs, and there were escapes from those. And uh, you imagine a, an emaciated, starving Auschwitz prisoner in a striped uh, Auschwitz uniform, uh, escaping into the countryside uh, where the population was fiercely hostile to Jews. Uh, <coughs> mostly they weren't Poles, so they wouldn't know the language. Their chance of survival was virtually nil. And in virtually every case, they were brought back to Auschwitz in a wheelbarrow, having been beaten up, to, beaten to a pulp, but still alive. And they were then hanged in front of all the prisoners standing to attention, forced to watch this. Uh, uh, and and, and uh, probably beaten first. Uh, absolutely horrific. So people did try to escape, but the uh, re revenge that the Nazis got for that was absolutely horrific and made very plain to everybody. Moreover, if one person escaped, the whole hut would be punished. You know, people would be killed. Uh, uh, if, if one person escaped from a work group, the whole work group would be severely punished. And the punishments were absolutely, you know, beyond belief. Uh, so, uh, for those two reasons, uh, amongst others, uh, escapes were uh, rare and almost never successful. But Rudolf Verba uh, was befriended by some Soviet prisoners of war. And by the way, they were another group category of people who were treated <coughs> horrifically. Three and a half million Soviet prisoners of war were killed in the Nazi concentration camp system. Uh, often by simply being put in a barbed wire enclosure and left there and not fed until they were dead. You know, simply starved to death. These were soldiers, trained men, fit young men. But they were guarded in such a way that they couldn't get out. Often kept naked, by the way. Uh, it, 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 it's high, you know, prisoners in Auschwitz were taunted by the guards, uh, who said, "You will never get out of here except up that chimney," pointing to the smoke coming out of the chimneys from in the crematoria. "You will never get out of here except up that chimney." But if you did get out, nobody would believe you. And it was true. The tiny number of people who did get out, they were simply not believed. When they told the truth, people could not believe that it was the truth. They could not imagine that human beings could behave like that. Rudolf Werber was befriended by a Soviet prisoner of war uh, and told a trick for getting out. And the Soviet prisoner of war had some chewing tobacco and they had access to a little bit of petrol. And Rudolf Werber and his friend, uh, when they were returning to the camp from a work party, hid in a pile of wood and rubbed themselves all over with a mixture of chewing tobacco and petrol. And this was to stop the dogs from uh, getting onto their scent, because that's another reason why almost nobody succeeded in escaping. The Nazis used uh, German Shepherd dogs uh, who were trained to uh, uh, track down and uh, attack uh, human beings horrifically. Um, it was a very effective method. Uh, and they stayed hidden in that pile of wood for some days. And then when the searching stopped, because the, the Nazis searched the surrounding area for days on end, when the searching stopped, they got out and they managed to get to uh, uh, the Czech Republic and uh, maybe to Hungary.